little bit. through the fabric if there's any little ridges a little sticking off. So I'm going to turn the few slides over, do the same thing on the other side. Before we stick the fabric on. Put a few pins in there to hold it in place, I get started sticking it on. On the brush. Start right here, and then you can follow the seam. Put it thin. Are oh, you run your fingers over there? And I run my. I just, you can use uh, gloves for this, but I. On nitrate dope, I I just uh, usually use my I usually use my bare fingers. It comes. You have to. It probably be okay to use rubber, rubber gloves for it, but I've been doing it so many years without rubber gloves that nothing ever happened to me. So I just. Use a narrow brush, you just get it on the, on the seams. You have to do a little trimming after you uh, stick a comb too. But this way, great dope. Will go when you put that on there. It will go through the fabric and stick to the first coat of nitrate dope you put down on the bare frame, on the bare perimeter of the frame. It soaks through, and that'll join up with the. You let that dry for just a little while. So it's dry to the touch. It dries real fast. And then we can go on the other side and fasten now. Make sure you got every all of it covered with with nitrate dope. Now it's nitrate dope, nitrate dope. You got to remember, <coughs> you can cover nitrate dope, airplane dope, with butyrate dope, which is a finishing coat, but you can't cover butyrate dope with nitrate aircraft dope, because that won't stick to that. So that's one thing you have to remember when you're using this method of, of covering airplanes. But I'll tell you that in truck to be right on the can or um, how to do that. So it isn't too much to worry about really to get. Now before you start on site, you can pull on the fabric a little bit to make sure that you have it 
it stuck all it all the way across. Just a little bit of tug. Don't pull too hard, but just to check. Just a little bit of a tug. Okay? That almost finishes this seam. Now, when you finish, before you paint the airplane and completely finish it, we use what we call the pink paint over the seams. It covers the seams. So now we'll turn the fuselage over and we'll stick down the other side. I'll just put a few pins in there to hold it in place. Temporarily till we get started. So you should stretch it. Over the top. So you need to stretch. One more pin. Yep. So now that's pretty good. You can see the top is fairly, fairly tight. The other one is real tight because the iron will when you shrink it. Keep shrink it. Just check to see if it's smooth all the way. Take my wrinkles out if you went in. Now the <coughs> fabric is stuck on the opposite launder on top, uh, middle launder on on the other side. So now I can turn the fuselage over and start sticking the fabric down on the other side. And that has to be done. You hold it down, then you start put the lip over it. Same as you did before. Tape right over the top of the center launder on. You can hold it down for a little bit and stick it. Let it dry a little bit and tighten it up a little bit. You can pull it. It dries pretty fast. So you see you got it fairly tight up here without any big wrinkles. You get started. You have to hold it down for a little bit to get it to stick. in it. You can maybe stick a, <coughs> stick a pin in there to hold it for a little while while it dries. When you're working with this uh, method of covering, it takes patience and uh, some practice. But if you keep at it, it isn't really that hard. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's enjoyable, it's fun. To be able to cover an airplane just like you do on uh, full scale airplanes using the old method. After a little bit. Was that the next step? The next step. The best way is finish the whole sides of the airplane before you shrink it too tight. So you make sure you don't, if you shrink it too tight, you can warp some of these stringers. Although this, the fuselage on, the, on this uh, cub is, is 
quite sturdy, so you don't have much problem with that. But it's better to shrink it gradually on both sides a little bit, you know, evenly on both sides and over the top. And that to make sure you don't pull it too tight and get pull the uh, fuse touch out of shape. And we cut, it's going to be take some of the wrinkles out and it'll look like the bottom part. How's that? Looks good. So that's all the procedure for covering a Piper Cub J3. The same method you use for the full scale and almost the same type of covering. Coverall, it's a SIG coverall, and it's a rayon uh, synthetic mix of fabrics. It, it so now we can take a few wrinkles out of here. When you get it to free the cover, you use the iron, and you don't uh, check the recommended heat on the iron. It's probably around 250, but that'll take some of the, the uh, start taking the wrinkles out of the fabric so you can see how it's uh, moving out. So the side here, I'll take a few out of here. So I'm not gonna, so you can see how it tightens up. And yeah. work the iron back to forth. Don't leave it in one spot. Don't leave it in one spot very long. So when you, when it's hot. But uh, this is the method you use to tighten the fabric. And you have to be careful to don't get it too tight. It's possible to get it to tight that uh, you might work one of the longer ones someplace in here. Oh. The quarter scale is, is real sturdy, so that you, you can so you can tell this tell when you got it tight enough, you can feel all it. So the the dope, the nitrate, thick nitrate dope doesn't shrink the fabric. The shrinking is done by um, with iron. So the next step on this type of covering is to put two or three coats of this nitrate, thick nitrate dope, aircraft dope, on the fabric, two or three, and you brush that out and thin it out a little bit to kind of seal up the fabric a little bit before you put the finish coat on. And then after you put the uh, two or three coats of this thinned out, you can tell when you thin it out just about how the, you know, so it doesn't. It isn't supposed to go through the fabric and bead on the inside if you get it too thin. So what you're doing is trying to seal the weave a little bit so when you put your finish coat on. Two, three coats of that. And then there's a um, primer coat you can put on it. That's a clear um, coat of um, butyrate dope before you put the color on. 